Monday, May 8th. Thank you, Pamela. This meeting is being recorded. I'm calling to order the African Heritage Reparation Assembly meeting um, Monday, May 8th at 2.05 p.m. With the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, and I did say this before we started recording that uh, Dr. Rhodes and Ms. Bridges are both unable to join us today, um, and Alexis will be joining us late. So just a quick sound check to make sure everybody can hear and be heard, and I will start with you, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, I can hear. Can hear you. Great. And Hala? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, really good. Thank you. Uh, Yvonne maybe stepped away, unless that's a... No, Yvonne, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Hi. I wasn't sure if that was, if you had stepped away from your background or if there you go. Okay. Sorry. No, no, that's great. Um, and Pamela, can you, you hear us? I can um, hear you. And um, I did notice a minute ago that two of your participants had their hand raised, but I don't, and I'm, I'm, they're not individuals that I'm familiar with, and they may have lowered them by now. Let's see. They're lowered. Yeah, so, yes. okay. Matea is there if you want to, uh, Matea is there if you want to bring her in as a panelist now. Yeah, I'm actually going to hold off. Um, I'm going to call a period of public comment and then just go over some um, quick things in, in terms of a listening session we have coming up, and then I'm going to bring Mattia over so we can begin our discussion on the final report. Um, okay, but I yeah. go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. Sorry. I was just saying, so, yeah, so there's a one hand up. Yeah, so I'm going to open up our first period of public comment. Um, and I'll just quickly read the statement during the public comment period. The chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your name pronouns and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue uh, or comment on a matter, but we will be listening very closely. And sometimes we can answer questions um, if, we, if we do have the answers to, to questions. So if you would like to make a public comment now, please go ahead and raise your hand. We will have a second period of public comment a little later in the meeting. Wonderful. And Pamela, are you moving folks or would, okay, great. Welcome, John. <clears throat> Can you hear us? <clears throat> John, would you like to make a public comment? Okay, it sounds like we might be having trouble. Oh, here you go. Here you come. John, would you like to make a public comment? Okay, it looks like John uh, was disconnected, so we will keep uh, an eye out for John um, and bring them back um, if we see them in the attendees again. So we can bring over Lauren and then we'll keep our eye out. Welcome, Lauren. Yes, hi, good morning or afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Thank you um, for having the public comment. Um, my name is Lauren Mills and um, I was recently at a um, community meeting that asked for pronouns and um, 
I was just thinking maybe it may for some people feel uncomfortable to share their pronouns. So I would prefer not to, even though I have in the past and I just wanted to share that for others who may prefer not to. Um, but that was not part of my public comment, but I, I wanted to share that. Um, and thank you for making the, the opportunity for us to share our feelings because a lot of times I think there are other residents who, if they were to have the ability to make public comment, they may not be comfortable, but I thank you for having the space that is comfortable to, to share. Um, our opinions. So my uh, public comment um, today is on a few things. Um, I feel from the, the last meeting um, that I wanted to share the thought that I personally do not uh, agree that uh, town um, reparations efforts should focus on federal attempts for reparations and that the AHRA's recommendations within individual municipalities uh, should focus on local community-driven solutions instead. Also, um, reparations should address violence in our society and impacts on mental health and youth, such as grief and healing. Um, not knowing how to grieve could be um, part of the reason why uh, communities of color um, have um, a disparity in violence and a disparity um, in grief because grief is a, a social disparity in communities of color. Um, so communities of color may not know how to grieve, are not able to grieve and are covering up grief with unhealthy ways um, and, and that could that could show up in many ways in our community. Um, I'd like us also to, as, as a community, um, think about how we are defining ourselves um, and are we actually defining ourselves? Um, again, the term black, it, it is synonymous with something negative many times in, in society in the larger society and does it um, encompass more than just skin tone? Is it the same as using the term African-American uh, for black Americans? Where and why does the media use the word black instead of African-American and how can we not reinforce the negative perception when conducting research and outreaching to communities of color? Um, I also wanted to state that uh, we are more than a political identity, like researching what the definitions of certain um, labels means. Um, being Black could be a political identity, and we are more than a political identity. We are more than, you know, the oppressive situations that we may find ourselves in. Um, as the musical artist Indy Irie says, I am not my hair, I am not my skin, I am not um, anyone else's expectations, but the soul that lies within. And Erica Badu says that in her Bag Lady song, um, that love can make a lot of things better. And um, sorry, I'm trying to read my own. <laughs> my old notes here. Um, also, the Black population in Amherst can reject or accept any recommendations uh, from the AHRA just as the town council may. And it is important of having a way to honor and recognize um, Black African-American contributions in art, culture, and academics in our community um, in the HRA, AHRA meetings. Um, and I hope that this is a um, is something that the the H A H R A and any um, coalition committee that follows it will take up. Um, and lastly, I, I always, you know, go 
for more than what I thought I was going to do. But I would like to just say um, and give thanks for the artists who um, who have paved the way and have shared their 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 thoughts with their music. And one being Little Richard, who is no longer with us, but his music lives on. And also, um, I'm sorry, Bell Hooks, who was a writer. And um, I would like to leave with a, a quote from Bell Hooks. As she said that, um, that I see it, the civil rights, she sees it as a great movement for social justice that was rooted in love and that politicized the motion of love and that real love will change you. So I just wanted to share those thoughts and thank you very much for public comment. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? I'm sorry, I meant to move Lauren and I moved Michelle by mistake. One second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. We should be back. Michelle, I'm so sorry. I was trying no to worries. move Lauren. <laughs> No worries, I was able to hear that all go down. So don't know, that's fine. Um, all right, so if there is anyone else in the attendees who would like to make public comment at this time, please go ahead and raise your hand. And otherwise we will uh, move on and we will have a second public comment period later. All right, so I'm not seeing any. Um, so I'm just going to give a couple quick updates and then we're going to bring Mattia into the room um, so that we can have a discussion about our final report. Um, the first update I wanted to share is our survey closed today. Um, and we did have a discussion with the Donahue Institute about keeping the survey open, um, you know, to collect responses, uh, meanwhile, having them begin to do their analysis. But there were lots of reasons why that um, wasn't the best way to approach um, approach it. So we did close the survey and um, it there's a, a statement at the, if you come to the survey now, you will see a statement that says the survey has now been closed. However, um, if you would like to provide feedback to the HRA, here's how you can do it. And here is um, further information about um, the HRA. Um, so just some final numbers. Uh, we have, as of this morning, when it closed, a total of 614 survey responses. Um, and we have, um, of that 614, 95 respondents identified as Black and um, 428 do not. Um, so they the process now is that the Dunahue Institute is going to create tables uh, for each of the responses and then provide those for each of the questions, excuse me, and then provide those to us prior to our meeting next week at two o'clock um, so that we'll have visuals um, and be able to look at the survey responses. We also will have seen the narrative responses um, in a PDF document. And I've started to look at some of those, but um, I, I received them last week. So there's gonna be an updated PDF with all of the, um, the narrative responses. And then the Donahue Institute will be looking for some information from us, some feedback on Monday based on what they provide to us. Um, in terms of how we would like the final product to look uh, in, in their analysis. So are there any questions or comments about the survey or the, anything regarding the survey at this time? You mentioned there were good reasons to close. Could you uh, share with us uh, one? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> sure. If I can remember Dr. Spass. Um, yeah, um, no, I think that the the primary um, concern that, that Carrie had is if we left it open and somebody responded to it, they would be under the belief that their response was going to be incorporated into the analysis. However, um, the analysis must begin now if we are to have our final report due at the end of June. Um, so we we did consider the possibility of leaving it open only for narrative responses. We explored some different possibilities and then we landed on uh, to ensure that anyone who wants to provide feedback would have their feedback heard and somehow included, it would be best just to uh, let them know that the survey itself is closed, but they could reach out to us. However, Dr. Shabazz, um, and maybe this is for a different, um, it's probably, this is for a different meeting, but uh, we did start to explore the possibility of that survey being an ongoing survey that the town of Amherst could have available um, for residents as this process continues, and how might we do that um, in a way that uh, is so that it's it's a living um, mechanism for collecting feedback as the process continues. Does that get at your question, Dr. Shabazz? Yep. Thank okay. You. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any other questions about the survey? Okay, I will share feedback. Um, Kerry and other members of the Dunahue Institute were very pleased with the number of responses, um, uh, particularly considering that we didn't do a mass mailing and it was really our own efforts um, at reaching different people in the community um, and, and sort of approaching it in a multi-layered, multifaceted way. And they were very happy with the response rate. Um, however, I think that we, of course, wanted to to hear, from, we still want to hear from as many folks as possible, so we will continue to consult um, as we can um, throughout this next couple months. Um, okay, the only other update before we bring Mattia in to talk about our final report, and I'm noting that Yvonne has to leave at 2.45 um, and that means that if Alexis does not arrive um, in that time, we will lose our quorum. So um, the listening session for the survival center, I met with the survival center last week, and the listening session is tentatively scheduled at uh, from 1230 to 230 on May 18th. It's a Thursday. Um, and as many of us who can be there as uh, would be would be great. We don't all have to be there. What they've suggested is that from 12 to 12.30, we have a table in the dining room where we can provide information to folks who may just casually want to engage with us. And then in their um, room that's sort of more private at uh, 12.30, once folks have had a chance to get their meals, um, they they can join us in that room if they would like to participate in the listening set session. Um, and we have some marketing materials. They're going to put them on all of their napkin stations and they're going to get them out to the community there at the Amherst Survival Center um, to try to raise awareness and, and get as many folks as possible to join us. Does anyone have questions about that? Okay, if there are, I have um, been trying to reach Mary Custard. Um, I sent an email and I followed up with a voicemail. I believe Jennifer Moiston also followed up with a vo voicemail. Um, Mary is the Dean of Students at the high school and um, trying to reach her to see if it's possible to engage the high school students in a listening session. If anybody is in contact with Mary or um, knows somebody who has a connection with Mary and would be comfortable or available to reach out to follow up with her, that would be fantastic. I think that's the one group we really, the, the, the youth 
in the high school that I personally would like to make sure that we consult with um, before our work is completed. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, Pamela, if you could bring Mattia in, that would be fantastic. Welcome, Mattia. Hello, thank you for having me. Absolutely, thank you for being here. Can you hear us okay? I can, for some reason I'm not seeing myself. I must have, um, are you hearing me and seeing me? I hear you and see you, yes. <laughs> Everyone else here, <laughs> yeah. All right, welcome. Um, thank you, Mattia. So um, in case you weren't here when we talked about Mattia joining us in a previous meeting, uh, Mattia was integral in uh, helping the reparations for Amherst group with the two research reports that we worked on and is um, a writer by profession and uh, she can say a little bit more about her wonderful self um, in a second. <laughs> um, but the other piece to know is that Mattia's heart and soul is, is very, very much in this with us. And so I couldn't think of a, a more a perfect person to help us with this, uh, is particularly the editorial pieces of getting our report together. Um, so I thought we could just... Um, quickly begin actually you know what let's do it the reverse Mattia you were gonna kind of pose uh, some questions to the group and then I if we would like to review our charge um, once again we can do that if it's helpful but for the sake of time uh, great thank you Michelle um I am very much honored to be brought in the room today and to uh, assist in the final report. Um, the question questions um, that I wanted to pose and then uh, hear from as many assembly members as possible today and perhaps over a couple meetings is really the very open-ended question of from preamble to recommendations, what do you want the report to say? And um, I will, in my work as a writer and in technical writing, um, often use and will in this case plan to use the transcript of all of your words to begin to put um, the um, that work into prose. And then we will um, collaborate, come up with a collaborative um back and forth as i you know work in all feedback until um until there's a sense that it's where um all assembly members want it to be so i will step back and again that question is from preamble to recommendations uh what do assembly members want the report to say Thank you, Mattia. And I'll just quickly, um, I'm going to just quick, uh, I can't, Pamela, if you're able to allow me to share screen, that would be great. I just want us to quickly consider um, our charge. There we go. Okay, so um, here's our charge here. And um, so at minimum, the report um, needs to include a plan for developing ongoing funding streams to repair past harms, an allocation plan, um, including eligibility criteria, um, addi additional means of repair for anti-Black structural and communal racism, um, and this is in coordination with various groups, and we've tried to be um, in, in, in touch with these groups throughout our process. Um, this is the minimum. However, I imagine that our report will include uh, much more than this. And, um, you know, I think it's not a secret that the world is watching us in some ways in terms of um, our reporting. And so 
Um, this is for our local community, absolutely. And also, you know, sort of setting up um, a, a model in some sense for other communities who might be um, while unique, also pursuing this work. So I'm going to open up the floor. Yes, Yvonne, please. I just have a, a quick question about like, are we, what, when is the um, end of our term for the committee and are included in the report, do we suggest continuing the committee? I think that happened last time as well, correct? Yeah, so our, this particular body, um, our charge is up at the at the end of June. So ideally, our report will be ready to present um, at the probably earliest July council meeting. Um, and whether this body recommends a successor committee or another committee um, is still yet to be determined. Um, but that certainly could be a recommendation in the report. All right. Um, so, uh, uh, Alexis, welcome. Can you hear us? Hi, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks for being here. And we are meeting Alexis um, with Mattia Kramer, who's um, going to work with us on our final report. I'm not sure if you heard the question that Mattia posed, um, but we're looking for assembly members uh, to provide feedback to Mattia with respect to what you would like to ensure is in the final report. So the floor is open um, for any other comments that you might want to provide to Mattia. Um, I will say, oh, yes, Yvonne. All right, so um, Mattia, you actually are the writer. And so you said that you were taking some of the information that we give you, including maybe minutes of our meetings. Is that what you're, okay, great. And, um, and then synthesizing that into a report. Um, are, do you think that they'll be specific? Or should we be trying to work up a, um, an outline? For you or will you do that i am glad to do that what i imagine is that it's easiest for assembly members to um dictate so to to share live um what you want um to be written and then um that that could be the easiest workflow mm -hmm. um i'm i'm glad to receive a, an outline if that um if that feels best, um, if, like if that feels like the best way to proceed um, from the group, and um, and if not, I will I will exactly synthesize is the perfect word. Take the minutes, um, the retreat audio, um, what we um, what you folks um, all assembly members over today, and and um, when Dr. Rhodes and others have a chance, um, Ms. Bridger have a chance to be on as well. Um, We'll use those uh, transcripts to, and then um, any uh, any and all other supporting materials, including, of course, the survey results and so forth, to synthesize into a report. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Michelle, do we have a time frame? Um, our report is due at the end of June, so. Okay. We're going to have a very condensed writing period. Essentially, the survey results are going to come um, to us and then to Mattia. Mattia has already started to transcribe uh, the listening sessions, the retreat. Um, we did make a request to have other meetings um, transcribed as well. Um, and then, um, of course, I think one of the things that Mati and I have spoken about is we want people to read this report and we want it to be vibrant and alive. And, um, and so what that may mean is a shorter report with a lot of appendix, appendix, is it appendices? How do appendices, you say right? <laughs> appendices, right? <Yes. laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> So what I, my, my thinking, um, and I'm going to 
um, go to Dr. Shabazz because I know he has thoughts on this as well. Um, I was thinking that if he and I could, based on the charge, begin to draft an outline um, in with respect to like the bones, the bones of the report, and then bring those to you all to sort of see how we want to fill in. But let's go to Dr. Shabazz and see um, what what thoughts Dr. Dr. Shabazz has. All right, so thank you. I am like you were raising um, a moment ago, looking at our charge for guidance. And when I do that, I basically see three major areas. One concerns um, the section of our charge that says a plan for developing an ongoing funding streams to repair past harms committed by the town against black people. So I think there, um, that's one area this report needs to speak to is our um, uh, plan for ongoing funding. Um, you know, part of that is something we initiated early on and was approved, or at least the general direction of it was approved. And that is um, developing a fund up to 2 million uh, based upon uh, money that are available uh, from the previous year's budget once it's certified as free cash. And that from that amount of certified free cash, as you all recall, we are getting a percentage more or less modeled on the amount of cannabis tax revenue that was collected in that same year. So we would certainly in this funding section um, report on that piece, but then I think there is more to be added in that section in the way of other funding streams. And of course, these are things and all of the things I'm going to mention as I uh, go through one, two, and three are things that we'll have to deliberate before Mattia could write up anything in that area. We need to deliberate and make certain decisions that I mean, we need to begin doing this soon in our, in our forthcoming meetings, putting forward a motion in advance, giving people some time to research and think about the motion and then coming to the meeting prepared to vote the motion, amend the motion uh, and then vote it or, or, or vote it as is uh, up or down. And, and so for example, um, and, and I lean on uh, our chair for guidance, particularly, but, um, you know, how to begin to fashion a motion that talks about other funding streams that we can identify, that we have I at least talked about, if we want to further talk about identifying them, that's where we need to go. But for example, Community Preservation Act funds could conceivably cover uh, things that have come up in the course of our listening and the course of our, our work over these uh, past uh, many months, that um, rather than trying to pull it out of the $2 million fund that, we've, that we're developing, or rather than try to ask for it as some separate appropriation, if it follows under the general criterion of those four areas that the Community, Community Preservation Act supports, open space, recreation, historic preservation, and whatever that fourth one is, I'm blanking right now, but um, recommendations that concern uh, Black residents of Amherst um, that could fall into those four areas, uh, I think it was co-housing is the fourth one, then we, we, we ought to list that as a recommended funding stream that somehow the, the council and the CPA maybe deliberate on how to, um, how it will respond or prioritize recommendations that may come uh, in the area or, or projects and proposals that may come in the area that would um, relate to, to black reparations. Um, so, and again, there are other funding streams we might also think about. Uh, besides the two we've mentioned, the 
the free cash amount being tucked away, modeled on cannabis revenue, as well as the um, CPA funds that may follow. Um, but we ought to have a discussion about that. Um, funds in the area of housing, funds in the area uh, that are already, you know, already in other funding streams, if you will, that we might argue or we might present an idea that some of those funds ought to be um, uh, reserved or prioritized to reparative justice actions. Finally, uh, or rather, in the other two matters, um, we, we talk about eligibility criteria. Now, we've talked about this a lot. We need to, again, move toward voting up or down where, where we stand. Um, the little document that I have presented again, acknowledges a lineage test as, a, as one uh, domain of eligibility, but it is not the exclusive domain uh, or, uh, of an eligibility criterion. Um, I, uh, that document argues that there are to be, um, we ought to think expansively. And while some projects may be uh, uh, targeted to and prioritized uh, those that meet the lineage, as well as racial identity, as well as residency standard, there may be other um, areas of harm, other areas experienced in the community where the uh, people are Black, they're African American, but they don't meet a, a lineage test. So we need to come back to that, we need to revisit that, and we need to vote up or down again before anybody can, can write up in this area we've got to make a decision on it. And thirdly and finally, um, the charge raises that additional means of repair for anti-Black structural and communal racism, um, including public events, activities, prioritize truth-telling and reconciliation. So again, this dovetails with what the report uh, will show, the survey will show, and the analysis of the survey will show regarding the area where we provided uh, respondents to the survey, I don't remember, five, six, seven different truth and reconciliation areas that based upon what we're hearing, what the feedback is of the nearly 100 uh, persons identifying as African-American, Black, or of African descent, um, that group, um, we need to look at those responses. We need to look at any narrative information around those responses. We need to look at the non-African Americans, the non-Black uh, uh, descendants um, of enslaved people as to what they raise as well. And then think about all of our listing sessions. And then, you know, again, start to develop a proposal that outlines, that, that, that suggests what our actual recommendations are around the, the truth and reconciliation processes that that we we believe um, ought to ought to occur as part of reparative justice. Um, and then there is related to that third area, um, you know, the other groups, uh, inter, the, the interfaith community, the um, uh, business sector, um, the uh, other departments of, of town government, uh, you know, uh, Pamela Nolan Young and the, and the DEI office and Jennifer, you know, soliciting their ideas, their input on initiatives and priorities that they see specifically re relevant to Black folks, to African American residents of this town that we can support within their work or call for support within the initiatives they're already taking. And, and again, fashion a motion on that, approve that. Uh, uh, otherwise, then we're not, uh, I don't think we're able, to, we're going to be able to fulfill our charge if we don't reserve some time over these next uh, few few weeks and meetings to actually talk about um, uh, motions in each of these areas of uh, funding, of eligibility, and of um, the ongoing uh, truth and reconciliation and relationship to other departments and uh, and and uh, activities in town. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Um, 
let me just um, just highlight a couple things that you said. So I have started to work on similar to what you've described. Um, a series of deliberate de deliberation meetings um, to to a schedule essentially to put out to the group, um, and I I think you're absolutely right. It's time that we have um, that dedicated time to deliberating on these matters with actionable um, motions in place that we can uh, move forward. Um, in the meantime, I think Mattia can start to uh, frame the report with the um, by documenting sort of the work as it has arrived to this point, um, including what our our charges and what sorts of things we have done, such as um, the passage of the two million dollar commitment, the co the consultation process sort of, and, and again, these might be as part of appendix, they may not be the bulk of the report, but they are things that, uh, Mattia, as we're working through deliberations, you could begin to work on so that we're not sort of at the last minute trying to do everything. Um, I also wanted to clarify with you, do you- I, you I have to leave, yeah, okay. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, no worries, bye-bye. <laughs> Um, do you have, I believe, Mattia, that I sent you Dr. Shabazz's um, position paper that he was referring to? Did I, do you have that? I don't have that, although you have mentioned it to me. So I was aware that um, the process to understand eligibility that that has begun, uh, assembly members have um, had a chance to digest um, what Dr. Shabazz put together. And I understand um, that that, so that that is underway, but I have not seen that document myself. Okay. Great. Um, unless Dr. Shabazz has some updates to that, I'm going to go ahead and send it to you. Um, and so you can, and, and that's something we're going to be discussing um, in the very near future. The other thing to Dr. Shabazz's first point, um, I think something we want to consider is cannabis tax revenue is looking like it's going to be declining. It is already declining. Um, and that may be the trend. So we may want to consider expanding upon that piece to include a recommendation um, that uh, takes that into consideration um, so that we're not, you know, getting into a situation where we're only putting in $100,000 or a hundred, you know, we may want to figure out a way to work with our finance committee and our council to ensure that at least the amount that we've historically been putting over is 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 maintaining itself. Um, so those were just some thoughts um, that I had right now based on what Dr. Shabazz has um, offered. So uh, are there any other comments or questions? And and just I think Mattia, as far as I understand it, is um this is a priority for her and she is, I think, even in between meetings, if there are um, comments or suggestions or questions, am I speaking okay to say, Mattia, you're available? <laughs> for Absolutely. Um, and I think perhaps sharing my contact information with all assembly members, glad to receive. And actually, Dr. Shabazz, in the last meeting, you mentioned um, making sure that we had we all had eyes on um, other cities' reports, um, for instance, so California's report, Providence's report. Um, if there are other um, uh, pieces of guidance like that that assembly members want to share um, to make sure, you know, I went back and and um, reviewed the community safety working groups um, final reports, for instance, because some of their recommendations remain relevant, of course, and unrealized. Um, so um, if there's guidance like that, that assembly members would like to share, um, that's very much welcome, uh, and any, as well as any other kinds of guidance or, or, or things that um, folks might want to send along. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mattia. Um, all right. So let me just check here. Okay. 
Um, we do uh, have four folks in the attendees, so I am going to call another period of public comment. Um, I am going to, uh, in the next day or so, follow through to send you all a schedule for upcoming deliberation meetings. They'll be entirely centered on deliberating um, the various matters that Dr. Shabazz just spoke to us about from our charge. Um, and I will also work on putting together some motion language that we can that we can use um, to move those forward. And I believe that uh, Ms. Bridges and, and Dr. Rhodes will be available. Um, I did want to check in with Alexis. Um, Alexis, if you'd prefer to check in offline, we can certainly do that. But I did want to check in with you knowing um, what's happening in your life and seeing if you had any um, anything that you wanted to share with us in terms of um, where you might be in the next several weeks. Yeah, let me, uh, yeah, let's let's connect off, offline. That sounds great. Okay, I will touch base with you. Um, all right, let me <clears throat> just see here. Oh, and just another quick update. I did... I did um, submit with the help of Pamela and Jennifer um, a revised Amherst Cultural Council um, grant application form. And I believe they're meeting this week. So um, we should probably hear something back from them. Um, depending, we put forward two options. One was um, to use the $500 to have our meetings transcribed as part of early documentation of our work um, for a, a bigger documentary. And then the other was um, to meet with the folks that Pamela had referred to us who do storytelling and, um, and documenting um, through storytelling. So we'll see, um, we'll see what, what they come back with. So if there's nothing else, I'm going to go to our second period of public comment. And I see that we have Demetra Shabazz. And so if we could bring Dee in, that would be great. And if anyone else would like to make public comment, please go ahead and um, raise your hand. Hi, Dee. Hi, just briefly, um, again, thank you for all the work you all are doing. Um, I wanted to make sure another group was included and, and maybe this has been stated at other meetings, but I'm not sure. The Black Business Association, um, it sounds like you're holding forums in uh, constituent you know, communities um, that you know, should be heard. Um, I love that the youth are being included uh, because after all, this is what they will inherit. Um, and we know that certain harms have been committed, um, you know, against our youth um, in this community. And so I'm glad you all are including that uh, to uh, hopefully uh, offer some ways in which we could nurture and support our youth in better ways. So the Black Business Association that is um, headed by uh, Ms. Pat Onunubaku and Dr. Milkar Shabazz uh, and others, um, I think it would be uh, important and necessary to hold a forum with that group as well. So I just want to um, put that request out there and uh, hopefully that will happen uh, and be included also in the larger report with Mattia. Excellent, Dee. That is, an, uh, that is a fantastic uh, recommendation and I will reach out to Ms. Pat and, um, and Dr. Shabazz and we'll get that organized. Um, I, I wish we could... Uh, amend our charge to include uh, the Black Business Association um, in that grouping of other um, organizations, and perhaps we can, but either way, um, we will consult with the Black Business Association and they will be included in our final report. Certainly, because part of the charter has to do with, um, you know, economic um, as well as other disparities. So, 
um, this is certainly uh, under the purview of AHRA. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, are there any other um, attendees who would like to make public comment? I see Dr. Shabazz, oh, I, I couldn't find you. Okay, Dr. Shabazz, yes. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to uh, ask in terms of the planning um, or if we felt we've already communicated somewhere along the way, but um, the, our charge does explicitly call out certain uh, certain communities, and as I said, we've we've had meetings. We've we've certainly engaged in collaborative act activities. For example, with the faith faith based community, I think of the the Majuba and other things. I know that, um, but is there something more? And, and then there's the survey. But is there something more specific? we feel we ought to do vis-a-vis -vis some of the constituencies that were actually called out in our in our charge um and 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 also in particular with the DEI office which didn't exist at the time of our that that this charge was was formulated but um is there something more formal we ought to do to like hear from or invite um uh input from the uh the bid, the Chamber of Commerce, um, the uh, the DEI uh, office, um, in terms of um, what they might particularly see as overlapping areas or areas that our uh, municipal plan uh, might 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 incorporate or should incorporate. I think that's an excellent question. Um, Hala, I see, are you speaking with us, to us or to some, I just want to make sure I'm not, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yes, I think that's a really great question. And I think that it would be um, important for us to reach out to the bid and the chamber um, to, we haven't really had any particular consultations with them um, regarding our work up to this point. Um, so I think that's um, a, a very important, um, as well as uh, meeting with Pamela and Jennifer, I think, to your point, Dr. Shabazz, and particularly also, you know, for Mattia, um, in Mattia, in the during the retreat, I think it was um, Pamela spoke about incorporating some of the work that is ongoing in the DEI department um, and incorporating that into the pros of our report. Did I get that right, Pamela, when we talked about that at the retreat? To be quite honest, I can't remember what I said from the retreat, but I do think that there's um, work that's ongoing in the DEI office that would be informative for the report that you're you're writing. So yeah, um, setting up a meeting to talk with us, Jennifer and I, uh, about the work that we've done, especially around, um, I don't have the charge in front of me, I don't remember the words, but around the connection piece of the community. I think there's a lot of work that we've done there or that Jennifer has done to, to make connections. So I um, and there's no um, I can set up a meeting. Is this correct with um, with with you and Jennifer without um, there being the open meeting because you're correct. You're We're staff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, wonderful. OK, so I will um, connect with you directly about that. OK, great. Yes, that would be wonderful. Um, and also what we could do is send you um, the DEI department and the town manager um, have put somewhat of a, a, a report together. It was in response to a motion at town council, but it's it will also be helpful for you to see some of the progress that's been done that really um, hasn't necessarily been in the awareness of the public. Um, so that might be helpful. If you think so, Pamela, that report might be helpful for Matia to look at. Um, okay, so 
Uh, let's see, any other questions or comments? I see Alexis just dropped off, which means we um, have lost our quorum. Um, <laughs> So um, if not, then we will plan to meet next week as usual, and I will be sending out a schedule um, that is a proposed schedule for you to respond to shortly. And we'll go from, we'll take, take oh, I see um, D. D. is your hand still up from last time or did, is this, come on in and I think this might be, put it down if you, if it was from last time, but if, Okay. <laughs> or D's coming over. All right. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm listening. And, um, you know, I don't want it to become too inflated. Of course, I know Mattia has her work cut out for her. But uh, as was mentioned by Mattia, the uh, unrealized work of the CSWG and the current work of the CSSJC. Um, and the Human Rights Commission. So even though these groups aren't 100% uh, um, African-American, they represent uh, the BIPOC community and speak to many of the uh, issues that are uh, currently uh, you know, uh, being challenged in this community around race uh, and um, you know, equity. So I don't know uh, at what point those things are included, either historically, but the CSSJC certainly um, has part of the voice of DEI, but we also have our own voice as a committee. And so I would hope that um, this is included within the report on some level. So that's it. And I'm signing off. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dee. All right. Um, yes. Okay. I'm just making sure I don't have any other notes here. Okay. Any other comments or questions before we, Dr. Shabazz? Just informationally, Hala, do you want to mention when the next uh, Black Assembly of Amherst Mass meeting is set for? One second. Yes. The next BAM meeting will be May 20th at 1.30, Saturday. Thank you. And so um, that might be something to put up on our engagement. Uh, Engage Amherst's page might be something to, uh, you know, um, help with you know, whatever our updated kind of email list coming off of the survey, coming off of, uh, you know, preparing for the survey just to kind of uh, blast that word out there again. Um, for point of information, this is a particular uh, convening of um, people who identify as African American, who identify um, as descendants of the enslaved uh, people of the United States, um, that uh, has been meeting, um, you know, even before AHRA. So it's uh, it, it's a uh, uh, would be good in, any help in in getting that word out. We'd appreciate it. Yeah, I'll make sure to get that out to all my channels, Dr. Shabazz. And I do wonder, um, just putting a, a pin in that, um, in terms of our final report and what Mattia may want to, what we may want to include in terms of BAM's role, um, again, being that this is a report where we want to capture everything that has been occurring in the community um, regarding this work. So um, that might be a conversation for you and Mattia or Hala and Mattia to be able to have to talk about that. All right. Um, if there aren't any other comments or questions, I am going to thank Mattia for joining us and thank you all for being here and we will see you next week and have a great week. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm adjourning at 3.04 PM. Thank you, Pamela.